What is up, everyone? Welcome to the Awakened Catholic Show. I am your host, Nick Delatore. Today, we have an awesome guest. Her name is Christine Merriman, and she is doing some super, super cool stuff for the kingdom of God for you and your children or children you love. And I cannot wait to share with you about that. Uh, I can't wait to implement that for my own kids and our homeschooling and uh, far into infinity and beyond, as the great uh, Tim Allen as Buzz Lightyear once said. Anyways, uh, you know, this is this is the Awakened Catholic Show. This is not your grandmother's Catholic show. We're going to be coming right back after this. Welcome back to the Awakened Catholic Show, everyone. Before we get started, I just, I got to tell you about some stuff that I think is going to bless you and everyone that you love, because the better of a person you become, the better life is going to be for the rest of the people around you for whom you're making life miserable. And I'm just speaking from personal experience. When I am less than the Nick I could be, everyone's lives around me are impacted by that. And so to help you be a better you. I want to tell you about the Awakened Catholic app. You could join the Awakened Catholic app. It's a free app. It's an amazing resource to get all of your Awakened Catholic content. It's an amazing resource to engage with people. It's, it's a social media alternative. It's also got a prayer library. Uh, as of very recently, we added a music library, and we're just going to keep growing that music library. There's so much on there. Uh, there's information about the pilgrimages we're going on this year that you could join us for. You know, like if you love Jesus and you want to go to the Holy Lands, where he was born, where he walked around, where he did all the crazy, amazing miracles that he did, all that information, the social media alternative, the ca the Awakened Catholic uh, Media Hub, all of that is in the app. Check it out by going to theawakenapp.io or just search for uh, Awakened Catholic in your app store of choice. Secondly, if you want to support all of the work being done here at Awaken Catholic, all of the different shows, the events that we put on, if you want to support the work we're doing and be a part of the solution to crappy Catholic content, then you can support our work by joining the Awaken Nation. Members of the Awaken Nation also get exclusive content from Awaken Catholic, and week by week we're constantly working on adding even more value to that. Um, the Awaken Nation is made up of people like you who love the work that Awaken Catholic is doing and want to be a part of why it's possible by making a small monthly contribution, uh, you know, like like a small cup of coffee or a bigger cup of coffee if your bladder can, bladder can hold it. Uh, you, could, you could make whatever contribution you want monthly, and, and it would be so helpful. Every dollar helps. No gift is too small. Um, but it is not cheap to run this ministry. It is not easy to run this ministry. We have a big team of super loving, amazing people who do this uh, for, for very little, frankly, because they believe in the purpose. They believe in the mission of what we're doing. So if you can help us out by joining the Awakened Nation, that would be amazing. And finally, one other way you can support Awakened Catholic is by getting the Hallow app. Uh, Awakened Catholic, huge friends of the Hallow app. We love the Hallow app. I use it pretty much every day. Uh, I get lulled to sleep by a, a recitation of Isaiah 40 through 44. They've become my favorite chapters in the Bible. Anyways, you could get that too. If you want to listen to the same passages that I'm listening to, we could be listening to them together, and it's almost like we're snuggling, um, which would be weird because I'm married, and I don't want to snuggle with anyone other than Alina, maybe my kids. Anyways, check out the Hallow app. It's hallow.app slash awaken, and if you get the you, – you by using our link, you get a free month of the premium subscription, and getting that free month of the premium subscription is the part that helps us. So check out hallow.app slash awaken. Christine Merriman, welcome to the show. How are you doing today? I'm doing amazing. Thank you so much, Nick. Oh, for so glad to hear it. Having me here. Oh, it's my <laughs> pleasure. And I'm just, you know, after that whole, you know, spiel, I got to take a little bit of my carbonated water here. Oh, go ahead. The danger with carbonated water when you're recording a show with a microphone in your face is occasionally, you know, some of that stuff, oh, some of that air. Oh, yeah. Wants to come back up, you know, they'll get a little bit of uh, belt. Totally What's the socially acceptable way to say like burping, belching or like, um, yeah. I, I don't know. If, if you see me pull my mic away for a second, it's because I'm trying to do that. I'm trying to do that super subtly. Uh, anyways, Christine, I'm super excited to have you on the show. Um, so some of my team members sent me uh, the the link to your YouTube channel, which is what we're going to be talking about later in the show. And I just yeah. am so pumped up about what you're doing and the way you're doing it and the reason you're doing it. And I think this is going to be a great show. I'm super excited for this conversation. Um, 
you, uh, just as like a little teaser, uh, your, your whole ministry in, in through this YouTube channel is, is kind of like a, an overflow from the work you've done as like a catechist. And, uh, if, if I'm misrepresenting this, tell me, uh, but, but you're basically like, you're teaching prayers and Catholic theology. Uh, you're, you're teaching a lot of this to young children yeah. and you're creating, Oh, it's already happening. Excuse me. And you're creating, <laughs> and you're creating, uh, music that helps the kids latch on to a lot of this stuff. Um, and I just, I think it's an ingenious thing. I don't want to get too far into that right now, but that's kind of the context of why you're here just so our viewers and listeners know. Um, and the only other thing I want to add before we dive into our full on conversation is that, um, part of why I got so excited about what you're doing is that it, it really is coming from a very similar ethos, a very similar place to, uh, fr from where we're coming from as an organization with something we just launched a couple weeks ago, which is our virtual retreat experiences for sacramental preparation for first Holy communion and for confirmation, uh, as well as reconciliation. Um, and, uh, yeah, so this episode today is sponsored by the Awakened Catholic Virtual Retreats. Here's a little video about that. I remember my first reconciliation and first Holy Communion like it was yesterday. I remember where I was sitting. I remember who was next to me. I remember everything. I can almost smell it. And I also remember not understanding what was happening the way that I understand it now. Now, obviously in life, that's how things work, but I, I know that while the people around me, like my, my teachers, my catechists, my parents, while they loved me, they didn't even at the time necessarily understand the gravity or the magnitude of, of what it means to receive the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ for the very first time. Because they didn't necessarily understand it in the way that would have been helpful, I kind of went through that experience like not getting it. It was fun. There was a party. I got some presents. You know, fast forward to eighth grade. I remember it to this day. And I, again, remember not caring that much. I was probably more excited about like, oh, what video game am I going to play when I go home? Statistically, something like 85% of people after going through the sacrament of confirmation leave the church. That number is staggering. That number isn't just a number though. I am the only graduating Catholic from my Catholic school who is still Catholic today. When I see statistics like that, it breaks my heart because they're not just numbers. It's not just some, you know, broad conceptual thing. Like these are real people and, and I myself even though I'm Catholic today, that's not without having left the church. I left the church after my confirmation. I stopped believing in God altogether at one point. It has been my life's passion ever since I fell in love with the Lord and with the church. It has been my passion to bring the truth to people in a package that makes them want it. Because that's really the problem. As soon as I fell back in love with God, as soon as I discovered the truth of the church, and I came back home to Holy Mother Church, all of the knowledge that I had gained going to Catholic school was just sitting there waiting for me. And even though we might be doing a good job teaching the information, we're not teaching the person. We're not teaching about who the Lord is in a way that is impactful or beautiful, in a way that, that makes someone hungry to know more, hungry to have a relationship with him themselves. Here at Awaken Catholic, it is our mission to help people discover the truth by packaging the truth in a beautiful way, in a fun way, in an invigorating way. And so with that mission, we have partnered with Dr. John Wood, who is the author of three books. And together we have created two virtual retreat experiences. One, which is for First Reconciliation and First Holy Communion called Dragon Slayers. And the other one is for the Sacrament of Confirmation called Sanctified. I could not be more excited about what we have created here for you for your family members, for your class, for the people sitting in your pews. We want these tools to be something that blesses your family, something that blesses your parish. And the amazing thing about these tools is that you can use them in whatever way you want. It can be a virtual retreat that you have all the families do on their own. You can integrate the modules in the virtual retreat into your curriculum and just use them in your classes at your leisure. We put together these tools in such a way that you can use them with creativity, integrate them into what your parish is doing. I hope that 
that these tools and experiences bless you and your community. To learn more about the Dragon Slayers and Sanctified Virtual Retreats, visit vr.awakencatholic.org. Christine, uh, man, I don't know if you can tell, but I feel like we got similar priorities. Uh, (laughs) When I read some of uh, the background behind like what you wanted to talk about today and and what kind of led you into the work that you're doing, uh, I personally related so deeply with what you were describing. Tell me a little bit about your your formation growing up as a Catholic, because you consider yourself a Catholic revert, correct? Yeah, I do. Um, I mean, my parents put me in first communion, like, you know, in elementary, but um, I didn't retain anything. I don't remember anything at all. And they never really pushed, you know, going to Sunday mass together and things like that. So um, I never really got into my faith until I got into this youth group at my church. And that's where I learned everything and where my relationship with God really blossom. Mm. It wasn't in faith formation. It was in that youth group where people really like took me by the hand and walked me through, um, you know, what it means to be Catholic and took me to confession every week. And, you know, we prayed together and that was like really the spark of it all. But, um, unfortunately it wasn't because of faith formation. Mm. Yeah. Wow. So that I, I totally resonate with that. Um, what was the yeah. fam- what was the family life like in terms of growing up in the faith? What was that dynamic? Um honestly, it wasn't something that was really, you know, a priority, I suppose. Um I didn't really know God through my parents, but I just knew like Catholic um and church was like, you know, it, it was just like on the side. It wasn't like a priority like I said unfortunately, when I was growing up. So I never really had that, you know, proper formation or foundation. Um, so I think it, it definitely affected me and kind of like, um, you know, who I am today. But obviously, you know, God's plan for me in my life, like everything happens at the right time and in the, in his way. Yeah. Right. And um you know, I have like no regrets. I look back and I'm like, I don't like look at my parents and I'm like, why didn't you teach me the faith? You know, like (laughs) I I knew this, but, um, I'm just glad that, you know, God is so patient and he's merciful. And, um, you know, looking back, it's just like, I just didn't have it any other way. You know? Yeah, absolutely. I totally resonate with that. I think about some of the hardest and the darkest times in my life. Um, You know, I'm like, man, wouldn't it have been great if some of that stuff didn't have to go down that way? Um, And and I was at the Easter vigil this year and, uh, you know, obviously nobody was last year. Um, I think about there's this absolutely gorgeous. It's almost one of the most beautiful things in our faith in my eyes. And it is this uh, song called The Exalted. Uh, And it's it's normally sung by a deacon, uh, but it, it can be sung otherwise. But it takes place at the beginning of the Easter vigil after they light the Easter fire. Um, and gosh, it was so powerful. Like we were all sitting in the church, uh, everyone was holding a candle and the candles were literally that we were all holding was literally the only thing lighting the church. And in that candle light to hear, uh, this deacon with this absolutely gorgeous chanting voice, uh, singing the exalted and in the exalted, you basically get like, you know, similar to all the readings throughout the Easter vigil, you get kind of the salvation story. Like why did we need a redeemer? Um, and and there's this line in it that is always just so staggering to me. And it's, um, Oh, necessary sin of Adam who brought for us so great a redeemer. And I'm just like, wow, necessary. Like the word necessary is so provocative to me in that, in that phrase, because it's like, how is a sin necessary but what it's really saying is like we G, our relationship with God would have been totally different if it weren't for that sin. It might have been in its own way, its own good, right? Like it would have been great if we had just walked with God in the garden for all of eternity and never screwed it up. Right. But to have the relationship we have with God now or can have with God now, it had to be that way. It had to be a, a dynamic where, you know what, God gave us the freedom 
Uh, it's kind of like the prodigal son idea. Like, what a beautiful uh, encounter that is where, where the father is standing out waiting for his son. And his son comes back and is like, listen, I will like be one of your servants. Just please let me back into the house. And the prodigal son just throws this massive party, puts his, be you know, clothes him, gives him jewelry, like just really dresses yeah. him up in this incredible embrace of mercy. And I just, I feel like that's kind of what that line is getting at. Like, oh, necessary sin of Adam who brought for us so great a redeemer. Like, gosh, in my own life, in the darkest parts of my life, it was, it was dark and it was terrible. And, but like the redemption that I've experienced um, right. and the relationship I can have with God now because of that. Now, just so we're clear for the viewers and listeners, not encouraging you to go out and have dark times of your life, not saying, hey, yeah. Go wild because your relationship with God could be better afterwards. <laughs> um, yeah. But there is something so powerful about that. And like, even in my own ministry, like when I've done parish missions or whatever, and I'm, and I'm giving a talk and I'm being super, super transparent about my story and some of the places that I've been and then the redemption, um, there are people attending that like, they suddenly feel this like affirmation, like there is a place for me in the church, even if I am in X, Y, and Z situation. I was at one parish mission, and I'm not saying that this is related to my story when I'm giving my witness, but I was at a parish mission where a woman came up to me and she literally was like on the verge of voluntarily, voluntarily entering into human trafficking so that it would be easier to get opioids. Wow. And I could not believe my ears, but like literally she was like weeping and she was like yeah. transformed by that experience, I hope, in a long term way. Um, but but like the the uh, willingness for us to be vulnerable and, and share about some of those challenges, um, mm -hmm. if we all pretend like there's this cookie cutter, like, hey, we're all good and dandy and being Catholic, it looks like this and it's all prim and proper. And like people like that are not going to feel like they have a place there. Um and so anyways, all of that to simply say, I love what you just shared. I think that that's absolutely right. I've experienced that as well. Um, and you know, what you mentioned about your family and the contrast there and like wishing that they had taught you the faith and stuff, you know, we, our, our Catholic education system, I feel has not kept up with the reality of our society. You know, the, you hear all this talk about like, oh, the, the parents are the primary catechists. Well, not if the parents haven't been catechized. <laughs> like, like if yeah. the parents are not evangelized and not on fire for the Lord, like what are they going to teach the kids about the faith? A bullcrap version of it. Um, so, yeah. So what, what was the kind of, yeah, the cycle, a hundred percent. What was like the transition point for you? Like, what was, what was your journey like after you kind of left the faith because you're a revert so you would have had to have left at one point what was that yeah. like and then what was it like coming back well I didn't know what I was leaving mm. to be honest I just I was convinced that why are they worshiping Mary why are they doing this you know in the youth group I was in high school right um I just had a lot of questions I didn't know the answer to it and um once I started asking it to them and they started giving me context and sources and things like that um that's when i was able to like really open up like my eyes and my heart and what god was really trying to tell me um but yeah i went to like baptist churches and different christian events because you know the feeling you know that they get you with the emotions yeah <laughs> um there's nothing wrong with that but um you know it's not in the feeling it's in the willing right mm. um so with all that confusion and just poor formation growing up um, in high school and the youth group is where I really kind of, you know, learned about my faith and um, got my questions answered about God and why are we here and, you know, what's our purpose in life and everything like that. Um, and so, yeah, it was just like a, a really beautiful time, but I was also um, kind of lost personally. Um, and, you know, I had a kid when I was like 17, 18. And, you know, I didn't really know what I was getting myself into and things like that. But it obviously affected my life completely. And I just, I left the faith because um, I felt like I was just ashamed 
And I, how can I come back from that? You know? Yeah. Um, I was like such a, like a, like the face of like the music ministry in my youth group. And, mm. you know, I just felt like people kind of showed their true colors kind of like, Oh, um, you know, I can't be her friend because I'm just associated with, you know, the sin full person. And, <laughs> um, it was really embarrassing and I just felt like I didn't have a place anymore. And so I kind of just, you know what, let me just do me mm-hmm. and just kind of, you know, um, enjoy myself in the world. And, mm-hmm. um, yeah. And it, it ultimately just led to me spiraling and, um, just really unhappy and not at peace because obviously we weren't created for this world. Mm-hmm. And, um, it just took me some time to really find out the hard way. And, um, you know, we're so stubborn, <laughs> but God is so patient. Like it's, it's really, really crazy. Um, you know, when I hit like rock bottom, he, you know, was there and he opened up like this, this door for me to really, um, you know, come back to him. And I really felt, you know, called to just, um, just give him my all. I had nothing to lose. Right. I was already at the bottom. Mm. And, um, I just started doing everything for God at that point and just like giving it my all for once because I'd never have done that before. Right. You know, it was always just like kind of, um, you know, a little bit here and there, but it was never like all in. And that's what God calls us, you know, like to do, like he wants to give us everything, but first we need to trust him and, and let him in completely. And then he can transform our lives. But if we're holding on to like this little thing or, you know, whatever we think is good for us, then he can't completely like transform our lives the way Mm -hmm. that, you know, he wants to. And that's best for us ultimately. Right. So um, the moment I let go and let God, right, that quote, Mm -hmm. (laughs) um, I experienced his mercy and his love in a way that I can't even I can't even describe like when I do my testimonies and things like that, it's just like, you know, I'm the least qualified person to be here, to be talking with you, um, to be teaching at my, at my parish, to be a first communion coordinator. Like I would have never have dreamed that for myself, (laughs) but it's like, it's literally like what I've always wanted to do, like deep down, like, you know, God knows our heart of hearts Mm -hmm. and our dreams and our desires and he just wants to give that to us but Mm -hmm. we just also have to allow him to you know (laughs) yeah and and the amazing thing is when we're when we're considering what am i capable of doing what am i capable of contributing we always operate within the paradigm of what our natural instincts are or what like mental boundaries we have based on wounds or you know self programming self-talk um, God does not operate within that paradigm. And like, yeah. if we're ever willing to finally be like, wait a second, rather than me considering what am I willing to do or what am I, what do I think I'm capable of? Maybe I should be asking God, what do you want me to do? Because, yeah. you know, th- this kind of reminds me of, of, I think it was Pope John Paul II that talked about practical atheism. Like if, if we really, if we worship a God, uh, that like is, God is infinite, is powerful, then like we should assume anything is possible. We should, we should operate in our lives as though that is all the case, because otherwise, if we limit what is possible, if we limit what he might be calling us to, then we're essentially living our lives as though we don't believe in an all powerful God. And that's essentially what practical atheism comes down to. Um, and I think that that was such a profound thing for me to reflect on because goodness gracious, like I have no, like what you were describing, like what the heck am I doing being a president of a Catholic organization? What the heck am I doing being a worship leader? If, you know, before I I came back to faith, I was in a worship team just for the, to be under the spotlight and, and perform and, and get the cred for it. You know, um, what a terrible person I was. And I really was. And, and what, who am I to get to lead worship or, or, you know, speak in front of thousands of people like this, this dude 
sucks. I, I do fundamentally left to my own devices. I suck. I'm terrible. Um, but by the grace of God, by the transformative power of God, like I can, I can, uh, through, through me, God can do some stuff and I just need to not get in the way of that. And I just want to affirm you, everything I've seen on your YouTube channel, I'm like, yo, this girl's got it. Like she's, she's doing this thing. And any, any amount of that imposter syndrome, there's only one place that's coming from. Yeah. You got to rebuke that ish. Yeah. Straight up. Definitely. <laughs> rebuke it because that's not real you're awesome and you're killing it uh okay, sure. but we're gonna get into the youtube stuff in a little bit before <laughs> okay. we get into that christine i gotta ask you um we're gonna i'm gonna put you through the uh kerygma speed round now we don't have a fun jingle for that yet so i just have to kind of overdo it when i announce it um anyways <laughs> christine are you ready for the kerygma speed round yes okay the first question is who is jesus to you Jesus is my God, my savior, my all, um, my hero. <laughs> I love that. My hero. I love that. Yeah. It's a great song by Skillet. Hero. <laughs> I need a hero. Brenda's over there going, yeah. <laughs> I actually discovered them uh, by going to one of their concerts, and I didn't even know who they were. And I was like, oh, they're awesome. Let me buy all of their albums. And I did that. Um, and... Uh, yeah, and also you know Nickelback uh, for the Spider Man movie. It was on the. It was like the theme song. Yeah. <laughs> Brenda's all here for that one too. Uh, uh, what was that one? That was like uh, Brenda. How did that song go? Um, shoot, I can't remember it now. Anyways, it'll come. To, it'll come to me. That that was a that song was a banger. Um, we need to. He, he's your hero. I really really love that answer. Um, okay, question number two: Elevator pitch for a life with Jesus life with jesus and is... they say that a hero <laughs> could save us i'm not gonna oh stand <laughs> in way i remembered it now sorry go on life with jesus hit us with it <laughs> oh my gosh um life with jesus is is everything um when you allow him to take control um mm. and you never know what you're gonna get with him and it's always the best because he created us. Um, and yeah, never settle. Wow. Yeah. That's so awesome. <laughs> That's so great. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Final question. Elevator pitch for a life specifically as a Catholic. Uh, Catholicism is the one true church that Jesus established and that's pretty much it. I mean, it's the truth. It's the truth. <laughs> I think that might I mean, be the best answer I've heard yet for this. Christians. Ask Siri. Have you ever asked Siri? No, I'll do that right now. What am I asking her? To establish her? the Catholic Church. Hey, Siri. Maybe I didn't set it up yet. I, I just got this yesterday, so I haven't set everything oh. up yet. <laughs> I'll ask Google because I have that here. Yes, use my microphone. Dang it. Oh, no, I'm so bad at this. <laughs> Who established the Catholic Church? Jesus Christ. Here's a summary. Right, well, let's do that I one more time for the microphone. Good. Who established like, the Catholic hey. Church? According to Wikipedia, the congregation... No, that's not what I said. Who established the Catholic Church? <laughs> Jesus Christ. Boom. See? That's all. I love it. And the kids are already hooked. They're convinced already because Siri said so. And yeah, I use that as an icebreaker sometimes. That's great. Class. No, that's, I mean, that's super <laughs> profound. I mean, I think that Google and Siri are pulling that from Wikipedia. But hey, if yeah. Wikipedia says it's true, then yeah. I'm exactly. here for it. You know? <laughs> yeah. Awesome. That was a great Kerygma speed round, Christine. You might win the prize of being the best Kerygma speed rounder yet. Um, God. And and there's a bishop on that roster. So. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> All right. So, uh, where were we? So you um, you were talking about how you were you got pregnant really young and you started to feel ostracized and you started to see people's true colors and you felt like there's there's no turning back from this there's no place for me in this um and so how long did you end up spending away from the faith 
I want to say about eight years. Yeah. Give or take. Okay. Um, I almost got married to my first son's father and in the church and I wanted to do it right. Obviously. Um, I still believe I had like, you know, faith, but I was just, kind of, you know, lost. And, um, and God literally saved me. He, hmm. I dodged a bullet essentially. Wow. Um, I would have been divorced probably. Um, he's not Catholic and it's just like, it would have been, you know, a little messy, but we're like the best co-parents now. Like it's just, you know, God is so good Amen. in his ways. Um, but yeah, it took a long time. Like for me, like I worked, um, in fashion, um, you know, I worked in like the secular world and I was trying to be like this, um, fashionista. I went to school for that. I got my bachelor's in that actually. Nice. Um, but it's crazy how all of that like creative kind of work and, um, training prepped me to be a first communion coordinator. Mm. Like, Cause art school, you know, you learn like Photoshop and you learn how to like, you know, color theory and all that stuff. And, you know, God never wastes anything that we've been through good or bad, right? Any experiences, like, it's just, it's just amazing how he just takes, um, everything that we've been through and that how he uses it for his glory. Oh yeah. You know? And it's like. Cause I always think like, man, like I shouldn't have wasted so much time doing this, like, and, um, you know, wasting, you know, essentially like, um, you know, education and like all the loans I have to put into that and stuff. But you know what? It's amazing that I work for the diocese now because, um, all those loans will be forgiven soon because I work for a nonprofit. I'm, I'm telling you, like, you can't make this stuff up. You know, yeah. God is so good. Like where you know, you think, okay, yeah, it's a, a mess that I made, but you know, God, um, turns that mess into something so beautiful that we can't even like imagine. Um, I completely agree. Yeah. yeah. And I've seen that in my own life. That, that is so a hundred percent true. So what was the, what was the big turning point then when you decided to come back? Was there a conversation? Was there an experience you had? What was, what was the, the fundamental moment? <laughs> it was actually, um, a relationship. Um, and you know, after being kind of unhappy and, you know, just realizing like, you know what, I don't want to live, um, life this way and kind of like, just kind of going through the motions. I kind of gave the guy you know, an ultimatum. I was like, look, we're going to either follow God completely or like break up. Mm. And so he's like, all right, I'm not ready. Or breaking up type of thing. He mm -hmm. didn't tell me. He just kind of ghosted me, oh, which no. was hurtful. <laughs> yeah. I mean, come on. But you know what? God saved me again. I dodged another bullet because you know we were we were serious. You know, we were like looking at like rings or something, and um, we were together for like a year and stuff. And he was Catholic, so I was getting closer, right? Mm -hmm. I was like, okay, this is the guy maybe God has for me, but. Um, you know what? Never settle in your relationships either. Um, you know, the person that God has for you, it, it will be somebody that, um, that will ultimately bring you to heaven mm -hmm. and without compromise, you know, um, if you just never settle just for anybody, you know, you want, you want somebody that's Catholic and that's going to, um, raise your kids in the faith and do it right. Um, He's out there. She's out there. You just have to be patient and, you know, pray to God um, because, you know, he knows he has that person for you. And little did I know that, um, you know, my husband, um, he was a seminarian for 11 years and um, he came back. It wasn't for him. And we met literally at the right time. We, we met at a rock concert, actually. Nice. What band? <laughs> a mutual friend invited us. It was Yellow Card. It oh, was I've like their last, their last uh, concert. Um, and so, you know, just like these relationships and, you know, um, kind of ha having people who, who are in the faith and who inspire you and keeping good people around you like that. Like, um, yeah, ultimately, you'll meet somebody 
like great. Mm -hmm. And God has like given me such an amazing man. Um, who That's awesome. teaches me so much about the faith. Like I thought I'm, I'm a communi first communion coordinator. And, but like, he like still tells me like all these different things and stuff about theology. And cause you know, he's been a seminarian for so long and, um, you know, God is so good. <laughs> yeah. Amen. Um, yeah. So that's it's, that whole thing. So he was in seminary for 11 years. Yeah. While I was raising my kid and wilding out, I guess he was, <laughs> he was praying for me. He was like praying for my soul and like, now was that you know, like he was praying for his future wife or was he praying for you specifically? I think, I think me specifically because you know, God who's outside of time oh, and yes. space. What, what I mean right? is did he know you before yeah. he did? I no, like we were just like acquaintances. We just had like same okay. friends and whatnot, but yeah, I mean, that's really beautiful. I love that. It's crazy. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> All right. Well now, you know, ladies, if you want to be a, a, a collar robber, all you got to do is be acquaintances <laughs> and you know, be in the same circles of friends. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. I mean, uh, <laughs> no, that's uh, some of my, some of my best friends were in seminary for many years and discerned out and have awesome marriages. And, um, yeah, it's, it's a really, that's a beautiful testimony. I love that story. Um, and how God was like lining up those cheese, ch cheese, cheese pieces. Am I hungry? <laughs> Chess pieces. <laughs> yeah, um, <that> works. <laughs> yeah. Uh, man, it is, it is really, really amazing. Um, and even like the, the, going back to the unnecessary sin of Adam thing, like if things had gone differently for you, if you hadn't fallen away, you wouldn't have the amazing husband you have today, at least not in the same way that you do. Um, no. and, and even with my own marriage, like, uh, mm -hmm. when my parents got a divorce, when I was younger, we were supposed to, if it weren't for the divorce, we were supposed to have moved to South Florida. And if I had done that, I never would have met my wife and the three incredible yeah. kids that we have wouldn't exist. Um, so yeah, there's such a profound, like, obviously God never wants us to sin, but look at the incredible things he does with it. Um, so <laughs> it, yeah, it's amazing. Oh man. Well, uh, there was recently, uh, a scandal reported. I don't know if you heard about this speaking of seminaries where, um, there was a seminary in, uh, Germany uh, where they had kind of declaratively stated that they weren't going to allow um, any of the uh, seminarians attending there uh, to watch our Catholic Weird Stuff segment anymore. And I found that to be super weird. Uh, as far as we're concerned, I don't care what yeah. dictatorish, totalitarianish regime you're under, we're going to get you the Catholic Weird Stuff segment, Christine. All right? <laughs> so let's do it. Catholic Weird Stuff. Why do they do the things that they do? ladies and gentlemen, we have got a weird one, a Catholic weird stuff one for you here today. We're going to be talking about the incorruptibles. Um, man, if you don't know what the incorruptibles is about, uh, or are about, <clears throat> I, I know English anyways. Um, essentially there are saints, uh, who are dead in the corporeal sense, but in heaven and thusly declared saints. Um, there are, there are saints whose bodies, uh, upon being exhumed, either for the canonization or for whatever, um, have not corrupted. Like, the the natural process of uh, deterioration and, and corruption that would happen to a human body over time uh, either has not happened or has happened way slower than it's supposed to. Um, and so that's what we're going to talk about today. Christine. Yes. This is a topic you picked. Uh, I've always been super fascinated by this. I got to see an incorruptible body uh, in Europe uh, when I went to Fatima. Uh, and I forget which of the three kids it was. I think maybe two of the three kids or one of the three kids might be incorruptible. I saw I saw one. I don't remember which one it was. Clearly made a big impression. Uh, no, but it's been a lot of years. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's crazy. And if you look this up on Google, like there are some really, I mean, there's photographic evidence of this. And it's not like... Yeah there's anything weird that, you know, science like doesn't know what is happening here. Uh, and there's no, right. there's no, uh, sleight of hand or whatever the term is for magic tricks. Like this is all very real, very grounded in like what has been yeah. observed. 
Uh, why did you pick this topic? I just thought it was always fascinating to me. And, you know, I'm like 31 years old. So imagine if like I shared this with like the kids today, you know, like they would have never like researched this on their own. Yeah. It's just like super cool stuff that the Catholic Church just has that, you know, that needs to be discovered and it needs to be shared um, with everybody because it's just like, look, here's the evidence, you know, mm -hmm. it's so cool. And, um, you know, it's so inspiring too, because, you know, God, um, you know, in his greatness and all that stuff, it, it just allows us to experience this in like our humanity and um, with our eyes, you know, and we can go visit these saints right now, like in Europe or wherever, all over. And there's just so many, right? And especially the most recent one, Blessed Carlo Acutis, right? Um, who I think the kids can relate to. And it's just so cool to just talk about it, um, you know, with like my classes and everything like that and just get their eyes all perked and their ears are just like, oh my gosh, um, that's just crazy. And then you got you got their interest, yeah. you know, and that's what we want. We want them to like talk more and ask questions, right? Yes, absolutely. I, I think to me, this is a similar category of like, I, I'm going to speak for my own life. Um, when I think back on in my, in my own life, some of the incredible transformative things God has done where it's like, you know, when I was away from faith, I was basically an agnostic atheist somewhere in there. And, um, in my coming back to faith, like God has just done some insanely amazing things in my life. And any time that the devil likes to like prod at my, my mind or my heart, like, are you sure this is all real? You know, like, what if, what if this is all bull crap? Just like you used to think it was. Um, <laughs> anytime that happens, my mind goes to, uh, the, incredible things God has done that have no possible explanation other than the power and the goodness of God. And I lean into those things in those moments of any potential for doubt. And it always works because these things are just so logic defying, um, whether it's like yeah. sins that God has healed in me that I, I'm like, I don't struggle with anymore, like things like that. Um, and, and when I, when I th see the, cr the incorruptibles, like it, it triggers something very similar for me. And I feel like with most things God has done, even taking Jesus, for example, when he was walking around on human feet, um, he, when he would do a miracle, there was always like a deeper reason for doing the miracle. It wasn't just like, Hey, look at this magic trick. It was like, you know, if, if you yeah. think I can, if you just saw me make a, a lame man walk, um, then you should believe me when I tell you that I can forgive sins. I'm paraphrasing. Um, but like he's always pointing to something deeper and greater. And when I see things like the incorrupt, it's not like any of us in the 2000 years since Jesus, it's not like any of us were sitting around thinking, man, I really wish God would make some bodies incorruptible. Um, no, <laughs> what it was is that God, like he wants to show his goodness. He wants to show his power. And it's like a really really cool way to be like, Hey, Hey, there's more to what the, to this world than what it seems, you know, like there, yeah. I, I, my hand is in all of this and watch me do this crazy thing over here and believe, um, to me, that's what the incorruptibles do. It's like God showing his yeah. hand being like, I got all the power and you know, I'm going to win this poker game. Um, and, and to me, that's what it does. It's like, it's one yeah. more instance of him, uh, conquering death in a sense. Exactly. I mean, I just wonder too, like, you know, if our, um, our Christian brothers and sisters, you know, non-denominational, um, Christians, if they like knew about this and like knowing that they were Catholic and, you know, how, how old some of these saints and bodies are, wouldn't they like look into, you know, like the faith kind of have like that curiosity yeah. of like, okay, something's something's going on here and it's truth and mm -hmm. you know there's proof and you know like just you know it seems like that makes sense christine but at the same time we're talking about <laughs> the exact same population of protestants that believe in the bible but disregard the fact yeah. that we created it so yeah that's true it's just you know i i hear i hear what you're saying though i mean even yeah. something like <laughs> like the fact that um 
the first apostles. Because I mean, as soon as as soon as you start studying the early church and seeing what happened with the first apostles, where they went geographically, the churches they started, you start to be like, yeah. oh, so they were Catholic. <laughs> yeah. This is awkward. Um, yeah, so I, I agree. And and this becomes one of those things in like present day where it's not just about like ch- studying the early church fathers. Yeah. It's not just about studying history or trying to retranslate the Bible a kajillionth time because no one else's translation was good enough. Like, <laughs> aside from all of that, like in the present day, there is crazy stuff happening, you know, um, yeah. and, and the Incorruptibles is a beautiful example of that. You're absolutely right. Um, and then, you know, Padre Pio, uh, gosh, he's a guy that he's incorruptible, correct? Yes. He's a guy that even in his life, while he was living, breathing, walking around, maybe yeah. in more places than one at some times, um, yeah. he's a guy that his life was an example of the impossible and the supernatural and the fact that God is real and that the Catholic Church is yeah. right. Um, and then he didn't stop when he died. Uh, you know, I, I heard, a I heard a, a story. There's this exorcist called Monsignor Esif and he, um, he shared with a buddy of mine, uh, when they were in the car together that like his, uh, spiritual director is Padre Pio. Um, and like he said that in the present day sense and Whoa. was like, <laughs> uh, okay, <laughs> that's crazy. <laughs> um, so yeah. And then there was another story too, where like some guy in England was in a subway and there was this monk, I don't know if it was a subway or the Metro rail or something. He was on the Metro. Um, Mm -hmm. and this like monk looking guy was there on the Metro and like was talking to him and he gets home and he turns on the TV and he sees this massive funeral happening on TV for the monk he was just on the Metro with. Um, in other words, it was Padre Pio chatting it up with this guy on the Metro and he he gets home a few minutes later and sees this funeral. Yeah. <laughs> like, God is so crazy cool. Um, yeah. yeah. Oh my gosh. And this gets back to the stuff we were talking about earlier. Don't put yeah. freaking limits on what God can do. Like, th- there yeah. are none. So stop playing like there are. Uh, <laughs> anyways, man, I love that. Well, that has been the Catholic Weird Stuff segment for this episode. Incorruptibles. Check it out. Do some Googling. Um, yes. You know, what I find interesting is I feel like we we need to set like a, a certain, a more accurate bar for what people are expecting when they Google these images because it's not like they look like they're still like their bodies are still warm and they still have circulation or something. Yeah. Like the bodies look dead, but they haven't deteriorated the way that yeah. dead bodies are supposed to. Right. So check it out. Google the images. It's mind blowing. The Catholic Church is right about everything. Let's move on. Um, <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. That, that's that should be the 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 like twenty first century version of the creed. Like, just the whole congregation. The Catholic Church is right about yeah. everything. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Um, all right. No, that 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 wouldn't be cool. Anyways. Uh, so let's talk about Christine in action. Uh, and I also, so you mentioned that you're working for the diocese. When you said that you're a First Holy Communion coordinator, I assumed you meant like yeah. at a parish level. Are you doing that at the diocesan level? Well, no, at my home parish. But yeah, I'm a, an employee of the diocese, of course. So. Okay, awesome. <laughs> oh, so you meant that you're employed in the diocese through your role. Yeah. Okay. Got you. Yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> yeah. So you're, you, you've been coordinating first Holy communion for how long? I want to say it's been over a year now. I started off as a youth minister first and that's how I got my foot in the door coming from fashion. They took a chance on me, um, because I had so much volunteer experience. Um, I kind of never stopped, um, volunteering with confirmation retreats and kind of helping out in the background type of thing. Mm -hmm. So all that volunteer experience, um, yeah, essentially got my foot in the door. Um, and you know, the the father, the pastor, um, took a chance on me. So I was just so grateful for that. And I was doing that for about a year and I really liked, um, you know, being a youth minister. And I thought that was like, for me, I thought that, okay, this is my demographic you know, middle school, high school, teens and everything like that. Like, um, I can definitely, um, relate with them and things like that, but you know, God has other plans for me. 
Um, so like a different opportunity opened up at my home parish where I live. And um, yeah, I just kind of, I took that as an opportunity um, to kind of be closer to home and to be with my family more. So um, yeah, it was just to be a first Holy Communion coordinator for um, elementary kids. And I never really thought that that would be like my thing, you know, like my, my forte, I guess, um, my niche, but, um, it's somehow transformed into that way. And, you know, I wouldn't have it any other way either because it's just like, um, I, I see now Mm -hmm. like how God, um, used this opportunity to kind of let my, my skills, my talents, my passion in music and things like that to really, you know, drive my ministry pretty Mm -hmm. much um and it's just so beautiful how things work out the way they do i completely agree with you 100 percent um yeah yeah that it is amazing how like we talked about even for your marriage like how god just kind of moves these chess pieces and you don't even know the full picture as it's happening but as soon as you start to see how it comes together the puzzle you're like whoa yeah (laughs) um (laughs) Yeah, one even 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 our organization, Awaken Catholic, like this was zero percent the plan. But like God just moved <laughs> these chess pieces and puzzle pieces into place. And yeah. yeah, so I completely love that and agree with that, relate to that. Um so I'm looking at your YouTube channel right now. Uh Christine in action, like at what point were you a, a catechist and then you were like, I should make a YouTube channel? Like how did how did that happen? Um, funny you ask, it's just, you know, through COVID, through the the pandemic, um, that's where it all kind of started. That was the origin story. Like, how am I supposed to reach out to my, my kids, my families during this time where it's almost like impossible, mm-hmm. right? Um, you know, but I really think that the pandemic was the biggest blessing in disguise in so many ways for so many, like, um, you know, people in my life, especially like my family, it brought us closer together. We pray the rosary every day because of it, oh, you yeah. know, just, just little things like that. Um, but really my YouTube channel, um, I was like, what can I do? Lord, please like inspire me. Tell me like, you know, what can I do? And I just, I kind of got the inspiration. Like Holy spirit was just like vibing with me. And I was like, let me just, let me just post some, you know, YouTube videos and make some songs. And the first one was so cringy. It was like <laughs> literally on my photo booth for my MacBook. And I was just filming from there. And the quality is so bad. But I did it. I did it because it's like I felt like at that time, you know, I was really called to do something. Um, and it really just sparked this whole um, this whole project. Mm-hmm. And it's been a really crazy whirlwind and roller coaster. Um, and I'm learning so much as I go. And like, you know, I've been releasing videos, um, weekly now. And like, um, I kind of got it down to a formula now. I'm like, okay, great. I got to up my quality. I got to up my content. I got to start yeah. doing everything like, you know, um, with like a schedule and, um, so that like, I can't let my, my family's down. I can't, you know, like going mm-hmm. into this next form- faith formation year, like I'm like ready. I'm so pumped to like come up with like more content and things like that. Um, more music. And it's just crazy. My, like my, my song catalog has grown to almost 50 songs, like wow. about the faith. Like, you know, I'm a singer songwriter. I've always been like, um, you know, growing up, like, um, being in like high school choirs and things like that. Like I would have never thought that I can use, like my, my, my love and my, my gifts for music, I guess in this way, yeah, you know, and I'm not the best. I'm not like, okay, this stop who wants to no, go out there. No, that, that type and, of talk is not allowed here on the show. Um, no, it's true. Like <laughs> I honestly don't consider myself to be anything. That's why I never really like, you know, put myself out there or whatever in that way, you know, like making songs and whatnot. But, um, if it's for God, Oh, sign me up. Yeah. You know? Well, and you, you've gotten, <laughs> I mean, I'm looking at the library here on your, on your channel and like, you've got a lot of stuff and you have songs on the commandments. You have songs on the prayers, the sacraments. Um, and you just released one for St. Michael, the archangel. Yeah. Um, and I mean, the thing is 
you're not just writing songs on these different themes or like putting prayers to music. You're doing it specifically in a way that will grab mm-hmm. children and help them latch onto these ideas. And yeah. I think that is just such a genius thing. And, and the fact that you're doing it as well as you are, like you just said, Oh, I'm not, you know, I'm not that great, whatever, like bull crap. Um, you're <laughs> killing it. And it, these are not easy things to do. Trying to put St. Michael, the archangel prayer to a freaking kid's song. Uh, no, thank you. I don't want to have to do that. Like, um, St. Michael, the archangel defend us in battle, be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. Like I can't imagine that to like it's a fun kid song, but you nailed it. <laughs> Um, praise God. You know, um, it's just really crazy how, how the Holy Spirit just kind of, you know, inspires me to write these songs so quickly. Um, I'm kind of on a time crunch because I am 36 weeks pregnant. So I kind of want to be ready for the next few months, you know? Okay. So you're Um, building up your inventory here. Yes, exactly. That's great. So that's why it's just like, it's so amazing, you know? how fast God, God works. If you're willing to put in the work, you know, Amen. pray as though everything depended on God work as though everything depended on you. Mm-hmm. Where did um, the, I said that. Yeah. but um, one of the saints, where did the, uh, Christine and I think that might've been St. Teresa, St. Mother Teresa. I could be wrong. Possibly. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> where, where did the name Christine in action come from? Um, good question. Um, well, my parents named me <laughs> Christine. No, um, <laughs> the yeah, second half but, um, is what I'm curious no. about. <laughs> I was like, what can what can I call this project? You know, and I'm like, I loved action songs when I was in youth group. Like that was the one thing that um, that really like made me excited to go because we would open up with an action song, we would close with an action song, and I was always told that you know it's just praising God you know, through our, through our voice, through the, through the lyrics and through like the actions. And, um, can you define an action like, song? Do you just mean like that they're got gestures to them or what do you mean? Yeah, by action? like gestures, And you know, some of it, it is like, like legit American sign language, but not really. Um, so like, yeah, like that always stuck with me. And I, and I always rem- remember those songs to this day. And I, that was like how many years ago, like more than a decade. Right. Right. And I'm like, if this is true, then the theory of, you know, putting these prayers into song, putting the catechism into song, um, should work for kids too, because I can actually, you know, perform all these songs for you because I, I I wrote them one, but I also memorize them too, as I'm writing them. So it's pretty cool that, you know, it helps me in my ministry. Um, but then like, it should like help kids retain the information long term, mm-hmm. which is like the goal, you know. Absolutely. Um, yeah. So hopefully it sticks, and um, you know, catechists, parents, children can use these songs, these videos um, for their own formation. And mm-hmm. as you can see, everything's kind of coming full circle with like my experience growing up and how. Um, you know, utilizing like my, my skills, my knowledge mm-hmm. with like making videos now and writing songs like, you know, can help others. Yeah. And I just love the polish. Like everything that you're doing here is just so great. Like even, even your thumbnail game is, is on point. Like your thumbnails oh, are so, you. <laughs> I mean, your, your thumbnails yeah. would make Matt Frad cry. Uh, <laughs> this is, this is good stuff. Oh, praise God. Yeah. yeah. Um, Canva Pro. Yep. Is where it's at. Um, <laughs> I do have an affiliate link with them, but anyways, um, but yeah, you know, I think that the presentation is everything too, making it fun, making it colorful. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, now that I have time to kind of um, work on um, my ministry because of COVID, I work from home mostly. Um, a lot of my time has been, you know, trying to make good quality stuff for the kids and for, for families, you know, to really like enjoy Mm -hmm. at least. And, um, yeah, I'm just so grateful that God can allow me to be this like one woman show. Mm. I don't have anybody that can help me really to make these graphics, to put these videos together, to write the songs, to, to research the material, to find, 
you know, all these different things and put it together and present it. Um, and it's all coming from me through the grace of God. Right. That's and it's amazing. Just, it's, it's so like, my mind is just so like, wow, I can't believe. And oh, I'm doing too. this while I'm pregnant. Oh my gosh. Yeah. My mind is like, how the crap is she doing <laughs> this? You have, you have, uh, two and a half, roughly thousand subscribers on YouTube and you're, you're pumping out weekly content and it's all great. And you're researching beforehand, you're doing stuff and you know, like I can't imagine, I mean, you know, okay, we have eight different shows that publish episodes roughly every week, uh, here at Awaken Catholic. And I can't imagine doing this without a team, but you, I just like, I just really want to give you props for like, <laughs> you're, you're killing it. You're seriously killing it. And I think it's an important thing. I really want to encourage, uh, any families or parents, uh, or people who know kids that they want their lives to, um, be even better. Uh, check out Christine in action on YouTube. Um, and we'll have some links in the show notes for all of the stuff that she's doing. Um, I'm assuming, do you have like social media accounts specifically for this brand and, and what you're doing with this? Um, I just have one personal Instagram account and it's Christine C. Merriman. So okay. it's my name. Um, but yeah. yeah, I don't really have like other ones. I try to keep it minimal, sure. you know? Well, it's I mean, simple. you're already tackling a lot. Managing that stuff as well would be way too much. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> Brenna, make a note. We got to put her, uh, inst her personal Instagram and the YouTube link in the show notes for today. Um, yeah, this is this is so exciting. Uh, I'm super pumped to show this to my kids, and we homeschool, and so like oh, um, nice. we're always looking for fun new ways to to engage our kids in the faith and get them excited about things. Um, so this is I'm personally excited uh, from a selfish standpoint to implement this, and <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. Is there anything else you want people to know about what you're doing? Um, honestly, um. You know, this is all for the greater glory of God. And, you know, it's not about me. And I just hope that, you know, whoever watches this, um, you know, if they feel compelled and inspired to share this with their, you know, with their first communion coordinator or, you know, with their own kids and stuff like that. Um, you know, just one soul. Amen. If I can help bring one soul closer to God, that's all worth it me. Amen. Amen. I completely agree. Um, all right. Gosh, Christine, thank you so much. Christine Merriman, thank you so much for being on the show today. You, you are a thank joy you. and I'm so pumped about what you're doing, what God is doing through you. I'm pumped for your pregnancy. I'm, pr I'm pumped for your baby to take its first breath. Do you know if it's a boy or a girl? It's a boy. Okay. Little, little Merriman's got to take his first breath yes. soon. Um, and <laughs> Yeah, yes. everyone watching, listening, just uh, pray for Christine, pray for her pregnancy, her baby, uh, just that everything goes incredibly well. And um, also pray for Christine's ministry. Go check it out on YouTube. Follow her on Instagram. Uh, and really appreciate you, Christine. You've been an amazing guest. Um, and then finally, again, this show has been sponsored by the Awakened Catholic Virtual Retreats. So check that out by going to vr.awakenedcatholic.org in case you couldn't figure that out, VR stands for virtual retreat. So vr.awakencatholic.org to check out more information about our uh, sacramental preparation, virtual retreats that we have today in partnership with uh, Dr. John Wood. So uh, that is all that I have for you today. This has been a great interview. I'm super excited to dive even deeper into her YouTube channel, and I hope you are too. Uh, all of that having been said, Jesus loves you. This show and all media on Awaken Catholic is made possible by the Awaken Nation and the Hollow app. The Awaken Nation is a community of people like you who support all things Awaken for as cheap as a cup of coffee a week and get access to exclusive content. Learn more by visiting awakencatholic.org slash donate. Hollow is the only audio guided Catholic prayer app focused on contemplative prayer and traditional Catholic meditation such as Lexio Divina, Daily Examine, and the Rosary. We here at Awaken all use Hollow every day and love it. To learn more or give it a try, visit hollow.app slash awaken.